Okay, get to the hand. Oh. O oh, Bhagavad Gita, by which Arjuna was illumined by Lord Krishna himself, and which was composed of 18 chapters within the Mahabharata by the ancient sage Vyasa. O oh, Divine Mother, destroyer of rebirth, who showers the nectar of oneness upon us. O oh, Bhagavad Gita, my affectionate mother, on thee I meditate. All the Upanishads are the cows. The milker is the cowherd boy, Krishna. Arjuna is the calf. And people of purified intellect are the drinkers. The milk is the supreme nectar of the Gita. My salutations to the Lord, who is the source of supreme bliss, whose grace makes the mute eloquent and the crippled cross mountains. Okay. Yoga of the trifold faith. So we'll continue. Um, number five was the was the last. That's where we closed yesterday morning. So we'll continue from here. We'll pick it up there. Those people, those men who practice terrific austerities not enjoined by the scriptures. Given to hypocrisy and egoism, impelled by the force of lust and attachment, and it continues, senseless, torturing all the elements in the body and me also who dwell in the body, know thou these to be of demoniacal resolve. Resolves, again, related to faith. Resolves related to faith. Oh, so... So the Buddha, the story of the Buddha is like this. Um, the, the Buddha had left the palace and wanted to know the truth. He wanted to know the way out of suffering. He, it, and what we see with him, which all of us have within us, if we identify these capacities, is the realization that this life is non-stop suffering. That the nature of this life is suffering. But also he knew, and he was present with that knowledge, that there was more than that, more than this. And so he went to seek the teachers of the time, and many of the teachers that he found they were involved in extreme austerities. And so I think we've heard the, we've heard the story. Um, you know, I actually felt like that was done. Like that time was done. It was interesting. But one of our, one of our dear Sangha was telling me a story. She had been with a group um, just a few years ago, not the five, six, seven years ago. And she was with them for, for some time. And the teacher, um, and how many were in the group, etc. I don't know. I didn't ask, but it was it was more than a couple. <laughs> um, and they engaged in regular fasting, and their practice was was really pratyahara hari, but but just a constant withdrawal, a withdrawal from everything. And what they came to was a uh, was a um, vata. Very spacey, very, she said she literally lost her mind. She lost the, the capacity to utilize the mind. She just walked through the, the motions. And this is tamas. This is a tamasic faith. So uh, um, God is a positive quality. Uh, God is a positive quality. Love is a pos positive quality. It's true that the, that the way that we find the truth is by withdrawing from our ideas about the truth. Mm. That's true, that's correct. And so the austerities that we practice are practiced in order to 
train our mind to let go of us. It's like a dog, like Mina, for some reason, had a hold of one of us by the leg and wouldn't let go. Then you would teach her to let go, correct? And so whatever austerities we engage in are really about this, because this ignorance as if has us by the leg and it won't let go. And the ignorance and the mind are not apart. So the ignorance is in the mind. The, the ignorance is the beginning of the, of the mind principle. Uh, so maya, mind, avidya, all related. Yeah? Uh, so, and of course the Buddha came to this, um, came to this middle path and this is the, this is the path given. But okay, even in this, even in this time, and of course we have the worldly extremes, which are very much tapasya faith, but also the uh, what are called spiritual practices in the in the same way. Um, we misunderstand the commonly we misunderstand renunciation. We commonly misunderstand renunciation. We commonly misunderstand detach. Detachment. There's a purpose for detachment, but it but it's only to clear the space for attachment to the real, for integration. Yeah. Mm. So, which which is as we get to sattvic. Okay, so we move on. Um, this is um, clearly there's a very specific tendency towards when we come in, and I remember coming into spiritual path and being willing to do anything. I committed myself to God, whatever you wish. And so if the Lord would have given me a teacher that taught with extreme austerities, I would have followed because I was completely committed, right? Mm -hmm. um, and some people would say pilgrimage must have been an extreme austerity because I had nothing, I, I didn't ask for anything carried nothing, right? Um, but the experience was not an austere experience. Uh, it, was a, it was a willingness to, to um, experience whatever was being given. Right. Um, okay, now we continue. Number seven. The food also which is dear to each, again, the threefold faith, as also sacrifice, austerity, and almsgiving. Here thou the distinction of these. So, the, so a good part of the rest of this discussion is now Lord Krishna will go through the three faiths, which are really the inner person. Right? Oh. Um, and discuss what food they eat, to help us to see, not outside, inside, right? The tendencies. Uh, the, um, and also to see how to shift if we're wanting to rise up, if we're wanting to transform, how to affect the shift. So really the lifestyle of, of these three, what they eat, how they offer themselves, Sacrifice, how they offer themselves. Uh, you know, this life is an offering. <clears throat> yeah. So it's as if we're given X number of minutes or X number of breaths. Yes. Uh, and so we have them in the bank and now we're going to spend them. So we give them. Is it so? Yeah. And how do you give them and for what purpose do you give them? That's your mode of sacrifice. But you have to give them. Oh. E even if you just lie in bed the whole time, still the breaths are ticking away, right? The moments are ticking away. Sure. And sooner or later, the bank will be empty. <laughs> <laughs> yes? And Lord Krishna will be breathing through another form, not this one any longer. <laughs> So the mode of sacrifice, austerity. Um, 
Everyone is willing to accept pain for something. Right. Yes? Yeah. Is it so? Yeah. Yeah, right? You would accept pain for Fio's health. So everyone is willing to accept pain for something. Yes? So pain, acceptance of pain for something is austerity. So how, how do they practice austerity? And then almsgiving, which is what do they give for what purpose and what's expected? Like that. So, which is really what we call life. These, these four. Well, no, all of them. All of them. What do we eat? What do we live for? Mm -hmm. uh, what are we willing to, to accept pain for? So what's important to us? And then how do we offer in the world? So mm -hmm. continuing, starting with food. Very straightforward and beautiful. The, the foods which increase life, purity, strength, health, joy, and cheerfulness, good appetite, which are savory and olaginous, substantial and agreeable, are dear to the sattvic people. And then, oh, sorry. The second you talked about food, I got so excited. It's not... <laughs> The foods that are bitter, sour, saline, excessively hot, pungent, dry, and burning are liked by the rajasic and are productive of pain, grief, and disease. Mm. Uh, sure. So hot, spicy foods, etc. Yeah. Like Sorry? I don't like it. <laughs> that which is stale. Tasteless, putrid, rotten, refuse, and impure is the food liked by the tamasic. Uh, for example, three-day-old pizza in the fridge. Oh, oh, right. You like that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, liked by the tamasic. Okay. Um, we turn this knowledge around and we see so when Swami Vishnu came to the West, he came um, espousing and living and sharing how to practice the five points of yoga, which is uh, started with proper food. Yeah. So, meaning sattvic diet. Um, and the physical diet, the food, is such an important part of this that that's where Lord Krishna starts as well. He doesn't start with sacrifice or austerity, any of that. He starts with food. Look at how much of our life revolves around food. Mm. Next, that sacrifice which is offered by men without desire for reward as enjoined by the ordinance or scripture with a firm faith that to do so is a duty is sattvic or pure. Swamiji adds a little commentary. He says, when a sacrifice is done with all due sattvic rites, so what's prescribed, uh, puja is, uh, is an example for us, but really life wants to be puja. Yeah. Life wants to be offering. Uh, oh. Um, with faith and devotion, without the least taint of desire for a reward, with the mind fixed on the offering only, for its own sake, then it is said to be pure in its nature. Here the sacrifice is done in a disinterested spirit or with an attitude of desirelessness, nishkama, nish, nishkamya, bhava, as an auxiliary to the attainment of the knowledge of the self. Hmm. Okay. So what about the rajasic sacrifice? You want to take a shot? So remember what sacrifice is. It's an offering. Mm -hmm. Yes? And he said, without desire for reward... Right? Without desire for reward. Okay. So what about a rajasic sacrifice? What does that look like? A desire for reward. There you go. Yeah. 
Bingo. So the sacrifice which is offered seeking our reward mm -hmm. and with ostentation, with big show. Yeah. Look at me, look at what I'm doing. Ah. Know that to be rajasic yajna, rajasic sacrifice. Yes? Mm. Oh. And then the tamasic sacrifice would be what? To get away. Indifferent. It doesn't make any difference what I do. Yeah, something like that. Uh, or to to very self centered. Yeah. Oh. Well, Rajas Rajas is very much self centered as well, yes? Uh, so they declare that sacrifice to be tamasic, which is contrary to the ordinances, so not even correct. I didn't bother to read what I was supposed to do. Mm -hmm. I don't want to sacrifice. Well making me sacrifice, all right, fine. I'll just do it. Yeah, I'll do it. I'll do it the way I saw somebody do this once. Just to do it, like if you're paying attention. Oh, right. Here. Uh, yeah. It's, um, it, it, and, oh, uh, very good. Our dear. Um, so, when somebody calls on us to chant, for example, and we pick up something that we've not been able to listen to before, or etc., we try to do, that's actually Thomas. Asserting. That's what that is. It's a lethargy. It, I don't care. It doesn't make any difference. That's a voice within you saying, I don't care. It doesn't make any difference. Mm. Right? And so recognize the voice. Again, we're practicing yogis. So recognize the voice. Don't follow it. Don't, don't energize it. Don't activate it. Uh, it's not predominant. A naysaying voice that just says, No, it doesn't make any difference all, what I do. All action. No, all that. Effort. For not. So that's Thomas asserting. Um, it's not dominant most of the time with you, but sometimes it is dominant, of course. And everybody will experience the, the rotation of it. Oh. So it's not the primary. Faith, when we're talking about faith, that's really the primary mode. Uh, primary mode is more rajas, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> I'll do what am I getting from this? <laughs> do it now. You know, I've been here 55 days already. What did I get from this? <laughs> it's a little longer than that. <laughs> <laughs> See? I'm counting every day. <laughs> oh, do I see right? Thank you, dear. <laughs> what am I losing from this? Yeah, what am I losing? There you go. We asked Jagan Mata the question, what did you gain, what did you lose when she departed the last time? She came back the two days. And beautiful answers. Uh, <laughs> what am I losing? It's also a good question. <laughs> okay. Yes. Um, continuing. We'll just cover this last one and then pick up in the morning. So worship. Um, worship. So... Tapas is the is what's being discussed now. Sacrifice. What are you willing to give? And what is the relationship with the with the giving? When you give, you experience um, pain. Mm. So I give my life for you. That's I give my life for you. That's also called oh, tapasya. Yeah. Okay. So worship of the gods, the twice born, the teachers and the wise, purity, straightforwardness, celibacy and non-injury are called the austerities of the body. Yes. This, this, um, these three what, what that are being they, discussed right now, please? these three that are being discussed by, right now, let me say this first and then. Um, austerity of body, mind and speech are the three that are being discussed now. Austerity of body, physical austerity. <coughs> uh, what is a sattvic physical austerity? Um, austerity is also control, you know. Fasting. Yeah, so fasting is an example of a physical austerity. Uh, control. You have an urge to eat, and so you say... As part of spiritual practice, I will fast at such and such a time 
in order to assert control over that urge, mm -hmm. over that self-centered urge, right? Are you know? Yeah. Yeah. So um, the austerities are being discussed now, starting here. Um, and these three around here somewhere, and I've lost track of the of the picture. Who's seen it? One of the one of the fabric um, artworks has the three sattvic austerities from Gita on it. Austerity of action, austerity of speech, and austerity of thought. Have we seen it recently? I don't see it. Okay. Oh, yes, dear. Oh, I was going to ask what the three were. The, the three? You, I think in the beginning you said there was like, a, it might have been um, fasting and, and celibacy. Or, uh, you named yeah, that. we'll cover them. So worship of the gods, um, ultimately God. Yeah. But, you know, we discussed this concept of gods. Um, there's, there's one, but there are many aspects of. There's the, there's the, and this is the factory, the shop floorman. So there's the god of the wind and the god of the, of the energies, the pranas, and the god of the, the mind and the mind stuff and the trees. There's a god of the trees and all of this. In other words, there, there are the, the aspects that are looking after all of this apparent creation. But of course, all of the one. So worship of the gods. The twice born. Um, twice born meaning the same thing as, as, um, as in the Christian tradition, born again. Born of the flesh, but then born of wisdom. Mm. Huh? Letting go of the concept that I am this body or I am these thoughts and identifying with the absolute. They're called saints. Here they're called the twice born. Saints or seers like this. Uh, okay. Could it be said giving up the body for spirit? Um, so worship of the gods, the twice born, the teachers and the wise, purity, straightforwardness, celibacy. Celibacy is control of the urges. It's not just sex urge. I mean, it has the meaning of that. But we had our beautiful meeting a couple of months ago about brahmacharya and such. It's really having an inner environment of control of the urges. The serial urge, if you can control the serial urge, that's also a practice of celibacy, kartikeya. Yeah. Oh. Um, and non-injury are called the austerities of the body. That's the same as desire, it's sort of like obtaining the and they're not Non-injury is like avoiding steroids, drugs, is it? Well, not injuring others either. Oh. So austerities are a practice to attain. They're physical self. practice. They're, what's being described first are the sattvic austerities. So they're, in this way, probably relate to austerities best as control, the concept of control, um, the yamas in Raja Yoga. We are on the Yamas now, correct, Hari? Yeah. Okay. Sorry. The Yamas. Um, let's read this. There's a good explanation in the commentary from Swami uh, Venkateshananda. He says, tapas, tapasya, is heat burning fire. That's what's being translated as austerity, the word tapasya. He says, literally, it means heat or burning fire. This fire has three functions symbolized in the three aspects of Shakti. And the three functions are Durga, Lakshmi, and Saraswati. The destructive Durga burns impurities. The benign Lakshmi purifies. And Saraswati, the god of, goddess of wisdom, illumines. This classification is no gradation of importance. One is important as is as important as the other. 
If illumination is regarded as the most important, it should be remembered that it can come only after the destruction of the baser nature, which is therefore more important. The practices mentioned here will affect this threefold miracle in the physical part of our being. He says, worship of the twice born is intended, we discussed, um, those who are born again in God, those who are God's devotees and saints and need not necessarily be taken to refer to the higher castes. Um, when all of our talents and faculties are Godward directed, when they are restrained from wandering along the pleasure grooves of sense enjoyments, the threefold inner transformation is effected. That threefold inner transformation that he's discussing is the same, which is the burning away of the lower nature, uh, um, the stability or sattvic state, which, which begins to become present, and the uh, um, wisdom which illumines the, the intuitive access to the intuitive wisdom. So that is the inner transformation. Okay. Um, it should be remembered that while it is essential that the senses, the external physical organism, should be controlled, it is useless to waste one's inner powers foolishly suppressing their natural urges such as hunger. The impulse to suppress any natural urge is often a very strong ego. Once again, the inevitability Sorry, the invisibly subtle middle path must be clearly seen by the grace of God and carefully trodden. The only aids in the spiritual march to the goal are constant vigilance, faith, and sincerity. Our master always stressed the fact that if we take care of the positive side, that is worship of the gods, the negative aspect, such as lust and anger, will die a natural death. Otherwise, vain is the struggle to eradicate evil. The middle path cannot be seen physically or automatically. Constant vigilance, in the words of my master, is needed, and that itself is the path, the march, and the goal. Um, so for satsang yesterday evening, we had the long meditation, and then we chanted, and then we took two readings from Shivananda Upanishad. Right? The first one was autobiographical from Swami Shivananda with the picture of the very young pre-Swami. Uh, um, here, I'll show you that. And I'll share in commentary here um, on our Facebook, the photograph. It's very interesting. He must be... Um, I don't know, 19, 20, 18, something like that. I can imagine him fencing. So I'm going to leave this here so that I remember to send it out. Um, and he says that he, he talked a little bit about his childhood and then he was a doctor for 10 years in Malay, uh, Malaysia. It's called Malaysia now one of the islands there, rubber plantation. He ran a little hospital, field hospital, uh, for 10 years. But then he realized that that worldly life, even what he was doing, and he was very pure in the Dharma, um, he was called to the medical profession in, term, in order to serve. And so it was an offering um, to the people that came to see him. But what he discovered was that the people that came to see him kept coming to see him. That he realized, and it's very much like the Buddha, he realized that, that there's no cure for the suffering that they're that they're experiencing in other words there's one one thing and then another and then another 
And so he would do his best, but he couldn't cure anyone. Um, and so he felt a calling to that which is higher than that. And he went back to India. And he described last night when we read it, 15 years of austerity and meditation. So the austerities he was practicing are exactly the austerities that Lord Krishna is discussing with us today and tomorrow. So that's what he chose to do, is to go back and get control of himself, the, the body, the mind, the speech, to get control of them. And that's what austerity is about. Mm -hmm. And to get control of them in order to turn them over to the light as instruments. Yes. I feel like I'm going through something similar because when I went into veterinary science, it was the same. It was just to help animals. Yes. But then I realized, hmm, well, the animals go through all this because of humans. So then I went into clinical nutrition to help yes. change the people's uh, diet. And and then I realized, hmm, I think humans go through something even bigger than that. And mm. I'm like, it is. It is bigger. Bigger and, bigger and simpler at the same time, profound and very simple. And so he was called to that, and the way to actualize it, the way to be able to share the light, he had to come into union with the light. And so the practice is a practice of austerities. You stop doing all of the things that are, that are causing you to be disturbed or veiled from the light. Mm. And so those are the habits, the practices. And so that's austerity. Starting, and here we started with the physical. And so I'll read just one more time the physical practice and we'll close. Worship of the gods, the twice born, the teachers and the wise. Purity, straightforwardness. That's a, if you look at any of these, you consider where we are and an ideal about it you'll see that, ah, I have a ways to go. Straightforwardness, you notice the tendency to lie in order to save face. Because it seems to be more important how you appear to be than how you are. How you're seen to be is more important because when you're seen to be the way that you want to be seen, then you'll get what you want from the world, from people, from the experiences, and therefore be happy. Correct. You're explaining love. <clears throat> it's correction. In uh, a way, it's not telling people what they want to hear, not sharing correct. what they correct. probably correct. could benefit from. Correct. Tapasya and love are actually one and the same. Right. So it's love, it's love that asserts control over the over the the physical body, the mind, the speech. Like this. People get really upset. And then who gets upset? It's, it's usually really upsetting <laughs> when we hear the things we don't want to hear because we I don't know. hear. Uh, yeah. So oh, okay. We'll close for the morning. But that's what we're getting away from, the conditioning of conditioned life where everything is done for a certain objective. To feel okay. No, no. Yeah. To get what you want. So In order to be happy, to feel okay, you're saying the same thing. Well, I'm saying the opposite. No, you're You're saying negative. the same. Yeah. All right. Okay. You're saying the same thing. Don't argue. Okay. <laughs> 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 to feel right good is, is his idea of being happy. Right. Ah. Uh, but different people have different ideas of what it's like to be happy, but happiness is still the goal. <laughs> That's why we're giving up all the stuff. It's because it, the old way, the conditioned way, doesn't bring happiness. It just brings suffering. It just brings suffering. That's yeah. great. So I was talking about it all the way. Thank yeah. you for sharing. Don't defend yourself. It's not about saving your face. No, I know. <laughs> <laughs> They're both about there, beauty. Closing prayers. No, closing prayers. <laughs> the beauty of closing prayers. <laughs> You're trying to get in the last word. God will take the last word. Oh, closing <laughs> prayers. <laughs>
Om Triumph of your job, eh? Savannah pushed the rod and on. Or by Rukhameva Bandanan, Rich or Bukshia, Mom Ritat. Om Triumph of your job, eh? Savannah pushed the rod and on. Or by Rukhameva Bandanan, Rich or Bukshia, Mom Ritat. Om Triumph of your job, eh? Surrendi Pushti Vardhanam, Vorai Rukhameva Vandhanam, Mritor Mukshya Mamritata. Om Sarve Sham Sastir Bhavatu, Sarve Sham Shantir Bhavatu, Sarve Sham Purnam Bhavatu, Sarve Sham Mangalam Bhavatu, Sarve Bhavantu Sukhinaha, Sarve Shantu Niramaya. Sarve Bhadrani Pashanto Makashi Dukapakave Asatoma Satgamaya Tamasoma Jyotir Gamaya Mritorma Mritam Gamaya Om Purnamida Purnamida Purnam Purnam Udashate Purnasya Purnamadaya Purnameva Vasisate Om Shanti 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 O adorable Lord of mercy and love, salutations and prostrations unto thee. Thou art omnipresent, omnipotent and omniscient. Thou art Satchidananda. Thou art existence, knowledge and bliss absolute. Thou art the indweller of all beings. Grant us an understanding heart, equal vision, balanced mind, faith, devotion and wisdom. Grant us inner spiritual strength to resist temptation and to control the mind. Free us from egoism, lust, anger, greed, hatred, and jealousy. Fill our hearts with divine virtues. Let us behold thee in all these names and forms. Let us serve thee in all these names and forms. Let us ever remember thee. Let us ever sing thy glories. Let thy name be ever on our lips. Let us abide in thee forever and ever. Humble of Satguru Shivananda Mahajaki. And for all the saints and sages of all the traditions. Yeah.